Today we are going to trap every type of villager in Minecraft, including the rarest type of mutated villager, and bring them all back to my base for their custom enclosures. Enjoy. This looks like a good spot. So first things first is we need to flatten out this area. And now we'll just set up a little beacon that way we can insta mine. Plus it'll probably be helpful to have up later whenever we actually start our build. And now that we got the area somewhat flattened out, we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna put our first exhibit and put one on each side of it and then in each corner. All right, now that we have all of these outlined, we're going to go through and we're going to start with the easiest villager to get. So we're just going to drop this down by five blocks. Stone's just an all around decent block and we'll finish placing stone. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the plains villager. We'll start off by giving him a place to farm. We'll put him in some nice windows so he can see what's going on. Of course he'll need a door. And then we'll give him a roof. And I think that completes his house. Other than it looks a little empty in here. So we'll plant some of his flowers. We'll make him a little path through here. And we'll add some little bushes in the corners for him with some hidden lighting. And I think that looks pretty good. And last but not least we need to actually get the villager in here. Hmm. Here you go. You can have a blue bed. And if blue's not your favorite color, I'm sorry, but it's uh, it's mine, so that's the bed you get. And there's the first mob completely done. And that would be by far the easiest mob. The next villager we were going to go for is the savannah villager. And luckily enough, we built right beside a savannah. I mean, that's plains. This is savannah. It, like, divides right there, so... These will definitely be the two easiest villagers to get. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a box of stone, shove two villagers into it, and we'll toss them a bunch of food. Oh. Apparently in Java Edition, there's a 50-50 chance that it draws instead from what biome it's in from the parents. So... We're gonna have to wait for another one. There we go. Now we got a savannah villager. Now we need to hurry up and finish his home. It's gonna be roughly the same concept as the plains village. We'll start off with the house. We're just gonna put it on a little bit of stilts. I think that looks pretty good for a house. And I noticed most of their farms are just plots of land with some water, like jaggedly placed in them. So we'll do that for them as well. So we could put a little well here. And I think that looks pretty good. So the only thing we need to do now is actually put the villagers in here. Oh gosh. Well, those 50-50 odds have uh, definitely proved me wrong, considering all of them have been Savannah villagers now. We'll just go over here and we'll redirect the rail over to our new biome. And we need to hurry because the sun's getting a little low. Okay, so you notice the bed out here. But if I put it up here, you don't notice it. Green particles, so why are you not why are you not coming? Oh well. Very well. And that's number two done. Number three counts as a peaceful villager in my book. Well, when his crossbow breaks. Now I just need one of you. Ooh, one with a flag would be kinda cool. You follow me. Come on. We'll name tag you right now just so that way I don't forget. Now what we don't want is the iron golem to get to him. I think we just go straight that way. Come on, buddy. And I think I'll do his probably right here. So if you could just follow me over here, please, villager. Come on, buddy. I swear you have aimbot. Come on. There we go. Now I'm pretty sure if I ride in the boat, he cannot shoot me. And now we just gotta wait till his crossbow breaks. 
I think it's like 400 shots. Wait, so if I... He's just... <laughs> he can't do anything. Oh, that's funny. Let's get to work on building his biome. Go, Iron Golem, go. Oh, well, while he protects us down there, we're just gonna tear some of this down. And relocate it. Oh, we found a goat horn. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so for this, we're just gonna build a little imitation outpost. Hopefully this won't take up the whole... Let's see, let's get some dark oak logs in here. I want to at least have a second floor on here for them. I mean, this looks all right, I guess. <laughs> Not exactly what I was hoping for, but, you know, you do what you can. We'll add him a little table in here, just like he had at home. And we'll, we'll leave his friend's head right there. And then over here in the corner, we're just going to make a little, I don't even know if we can do a little, but a little iron golem cage. Let's see if we can actually build an iron golem in here. I don't think this will work, actually. No, because there can't be any blocks touching the iron golem. We might be able to make it out here and then push the iron golem in there. Oh. No, 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 no. No! And let's see if we can't build some sort of little tent for him over here. I think it's supposed to be taller than that, but that's what he's getting. And now that's our peaceful pillager done. That's a pretty cool goat horn. I would say so far this is this is definitely my favorite exhibit. It looks like an iron golem has found his way over here. And as much as I like that, I can't have you getting my pillager. And all we need to do is trap two villagers in a boat. Hmm. Hmm. Now we need to separate these villagers into two different boats. Now we can open up this edge. And one by one we need to cart the villagers quite a ways away to the swamp. Do you guys need more food, or...? Look, I can give you more food. I've already given you a stack of hay bales, though. I, I figure that's enough. But I'll, I'll make some more beds, I guess. I mean, this is all inside the mangrove swamp. This has a 50-50 shot of giving me a swamp villager, so... You, you do need to... You know... It's like they keep looking at each other like they want to, but there's no love particles. So... Well, I don't know, they have plenty of food, they have beds, they have light. Meanwhile... I, f I realize I was the one that made the mistake, but I realize you're not supposed to give them wheat, you're supposed to give them bread. So hopefully if I put a farmer job down, one of them will turn to a farmer, make bread. Hopefully that'll help. Anyway, guys, I guess I just need AFK up here till, I don't know, the baby happens. Come on, a swamp baby! There we go. Too easy. Oh, he's even got a little mushroom in his belt. Alright, now all we gotta do is, uh, steal their child. You look so goofy with the little toad pad on your head. And now you're just going to come back with me to be put in an exhibit forever. Hm. So I guess I'm going to start off pretty simple by building a little witch hut here. Probably something like this. All these got to be a little bit of a mini version since, you know, we don't exactly have the space to build a full version. We'll add a nice little floor in it. We'll bring these up. And we're probably going to hide some stairs in the back. Just so that way he can get up to go to bed. Bring all the logs up by one, and then that one's level with the top. That one comes up a little bit. This one's gonna have to come up a little bit too. I think it'll be okay though. We'll add our walls back there. We'll add our little front grate. We'll add our little door. And of course we'll leave him, leave him with a crafting bench and a bed. For the ground, I think we'll tear it out and replace it with some mud. It's definitely not the best mangrove tree I've ever built, but it'll be all right. We're gonna turn most of this into mud, except where he has a little pathway. That way, hopefully, it's almost like the hut's floating on the mud. Muddy water. 
And then here we'll just outline a little farm for them. Now we'll scatter some lily pads around. And then we'll plant maybe another tree over here in this corner. There we go. We'll just scatter some of the water right there. They're kind of like weeds growing under his house. And then we'll finish it off by putting some moss carpet just scattered around on some of these. We'll leave him his little composter here. And we'll even till the ground. It's all right, Swamp Villager. We got this. We, we can definitely make it before all the mobs get us. I think it'd be nice if each variant had like a different sound to him. There you go, villager. As of right now, I would say this is probably my favorite villager, even though he's just kind of walking over here doing nothing. So the next villager I think we're going to get is going to be a jungle villager. And we're just going to use this rail I already have and take him to the river from where I got my panda from over here. We're just going to rebuild the rails all the way to this river right here. And then that connects with the jungle over there. And we'll have to transport two villagers that way. And then the next two, that river also connects to the desert, so I'm going to get those two and take them over to the desert. And this time, since I'm giving you the right things, and now we wait. Finally! There we go. And there's a jungle villager. And now we'll take him back. Looks like he's wearing cheetahs. What's going on down there? Two guys with tridents? How rare is that? Did I get one? Oh, I got a trident. Okay. It's actually cool. Hey, finally got a trident at least. Now we'll leave him here for safekeeping. We're going to take two of these villagers over to the desert through the waterways. And I brought villagers all this way and there's a village right here that I could just steal one of these villagers. Well, I guess I will. Wait a minute. I think this, I think this counts, doesn't it? A wooded Badlands, we can get our Badlands village here because we can just take two of these villagers over there. Oh, I love it when something comes together. Another village? <laughs> but that's gonna work out really great for the Badlands. Well, I guess we're going to work our way back to our first village and see what we can do from there. See if there's any waterways that connect the two. That way we can easily transport the Badlands villager. You're going to come with me. We'll bring your farm with us. Oh, are you going to paddle the boat by yourself? Well, you're not really getting anywhere. Here, I'll help. Never mind. I I am the stupid one here. To get a taiga villager, I need an actual taiga biome. This gives me a desert villager. So, I need to find a taiga. And I need to find an ice biome. Alright, for now we're just going to start on our desert village. This is just going to be one of those basic ones you see. In like every desert village. We'll place some stairs, we'll place some terracotta, and then we'll take our smooth sandstone. We'll go around the edges with smooth sandstone. We'll put him a bed in here. We'll put his little cactus in here. We'll leave him a lantern. And then we're just going to use smooth stone slabs to fill in the roof. I think that'll give it a pretty well-rounded look that looks almost exactly like one. Yeah, look at that. That looks, that looks basically the same, I'd think. Now for out here, we're going to grab some cut sandstone, some smooth sandstone, and some stairs. And I'd say in this corner... We'll make them a little farmland. The only reason I'm giving them farmland is so that way they can, you know, actually survive in here. And we'll go ahead and just hide some light back here as well. Make some smooth stone stairs. And here's his little garden. We'll even give him a little husk head as, like, memorabilia from, like, a mob he's slain. Now, I don't know how well this will work, but we're going to try to build him a little temple over here. Just kind of... Something kind of like that, just a little, just a little desert temple. It has a little opening on top, and then we'll hide some lights in here just so that way mobs don't spawn in there and beat them up. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. Now I think we'll start working on the jungle one, and I think I'll put it. Yeah, I'll put it over here just so I don't tear down my beacon yet. 
I'm thinking the same concept as the swamp villager, except this time jungle. And we won't slab where the tree supposedly is like poking through, just to make it seem like the tree is grown through the house. I think something like that looks pretty all right. We'll take some pods oil. We'll make like a little bamboo forest right here. We'll even add like some little hill to it. And then over in this corner, we'll make a little mini jungle tree. And instead of a piece of wood right here, we're just gonna we're just gonna hide a little light in there. We'll throw a vine on it. We'll throw some cocoa beans because he is a farmer after all. We're gonna build him just a little farm right here. We'll give him a dark green bed. We'll take one flower pot. We'll take a jungle log. And we'll give him a piece of bamboo. And then we'll hang him a little lantern. Then we're just going to go around the edge and we're just going to have some growth. And then one more here. And we'll put them in. Here's you some carrots. And then last but not least, we'll make his job site. And we'll just place it over here on that corner. The only reason we've been putting glass on top is so that way he doesn't jump on it and then jump off and ruin his own crops. Other than that, I think this one's coming together pretty good as well. Now we only have two villagers left. We have Taiga and Snowy. And I have no idea where either of those biomes are, so I guess we're gonna have to go fly around for a bit in a circle. So now Snowy, hopefully we can find a village. But Taiga, I don't know what we're gonna do. This is the swamp where I get all my slimes from, and luckily I think I remember some snow being over here. Ooh, what's this? Windswept savanna, all the way up here in the sky. I thought there was some snow around here. Oh, there's some. Let's see, hopefully it's a biome we can use. Windswept forest? No, we can't use this sadly, it has to be a snowy. I figured there was snow here, I mean, but I guess I'll keep looking. I've just been flying around aimlessly looking. Dark forest, I need to look for a taiga and a snowy biome. It can be any type of snowy biome. And I'm trying to obviously find the closest one, so I've been kind of going in circles. But hopefully I'll be back with y'all when I find one, probably. The next day. And we finally found a snowy biome. I tried to remember where I found the goats from, but I could not. Yeah, Jagged Peaks. I'm pretty sure this counts. What is this? This is insane. Maybe some of these villagers will be... No, I think they're all Plains villagers. But, hey, I can move two of these villagers over there very easily into the Frozen Peaks. Let me just trap two in a boat, actually. You guys have a little fishing hut around here. That's... That's pretty cool, actually. All right, now we just got to move both y'all over to the frozen peaks, give you some beds. Come on, first try. I see blue. Oh, a little Eskimo baby. Anyways, I'm going to trap a bunch of these villagers in the boats, hopefully. Oh, there's two. Push you in one and you in one. There we go. And there is the beautiful taiga biome right on the way home. I love it when a plan comes together. So we'll drop two villagers off here, have them make a taiga baby here, and then we'll take our we'll take our taiga child and our snowy child back home and put them both in their habitats. Hello dolphins. Hey, we got a taiga villager our first try. So now I'm going to build a little bubble column here and then row the villager all the way back. That's a lot of iron golems. Five iron golems for that one little village. So, I guess we'll start with the Eskimo first. The little snowy villager. I know the savannah's not your perfect environment, but you'll be all right. First things first, we're gonna start with some snow and packed ice, some lanterns, and some spruce. And we're gonna try to form a little igloo. I don't know how well this is going to go, but... Yeah, something like that's looking pretty decent. And then we'll finish it off with just a couple more. And then we'll leave this middle one open here. The reason we're going to leave that middle one open is I would assume it's pretty cold inside the igloo. So if I was a villager, I'd definitely want a little campfire. And obviously the smoke's got to have somewhere to go. And then we'll also hang a little light right here on top of the crafting bench. We'll go ahead and replace the floor with some more snow. And then out here we'll add a little spruce tree. And we'll put some snow on it to show it's been blanketed by snow a little bit. Something like that looks pretty decent. 
we'll build up some like different layers of snow to show like the build up over time and just to give it a little bit more texture kind of as if the snow drifted up here over time around the igloo and then we're going to go ahead and replace most of the floor with snow over here we'll leave like a little i don't know almost frozen pond maybe just kind of tucked away in the corner over here and then we'll surround this by snow and then right here we'll add a little garden space for him, but we're going to put a slab to waterlog it. And that should hopefully be enough to sustain him. And then we can just take a sheet of snow and stick it right over the... I think with this, once the crops are there you won't be able to see it. And then if we build up some snow over here, kind of just around, I think we might be able to hide a lantern over here. And then maybe we'll put a couple of chairs out here. Just for him to sit down and relax in. But one like there, overlooking the little pond, and maybe one over here by the tree. In the spirit of it being... Oh no! I, I guess they don't survive in savannas very long. Well, that's very unfortunate. Or else he could have had a snowman. But anyways, we'll drop the villager in. He should instantly become a farmer. We'll give you a white bed in here where it's nice and warm. I'm just a little worried you're gonna step on that fire. Okay, smoke still goes through it, okay. But now, see, he can't he can't step up on the fire. Oh, and look, he went right to bed. And this is our ice biome done. And last but not least, we have the taiga villager. So I'm assuming he'd make his house out of spruce logs, considering that's what's available in the taiga. We'll fill in the top with slabs. I think something like that looks pretty decent. Now there's a lot of overgrowth and hills and so we'll just kind of tear up the ground a little bit here and there and we'll sprinkle in some coarse dirt. We'll sprinkle in a little bit of cobblestone and gravel. We're gonna put the garden bed over in this one. We're just gonna butt it up right against the wall here. I'm just gonna fill it in with some dirt. We'll hide the water here underneath the stone. We'll give him some wheat seeds, and we'll boat him in here. We'll make him his little farmer job here. And then we'll give him some seeds as well. And then we'll go with some spruce leaves and kind of try to cover up the lantern somewhat, just to give it some more texture. I think that concludes our taiga biome. And now we need to start on one of the rarest mobs in the game. I mean, I just, <laughs> I don't know how a mob can be so rare. I'll give you the actual numbers on screen. I just know it is like, I've only ever seen one and I've played Minecraft for most of my child life and most of my adult life. And that is a baby zombie riding a chicken, but it is a baby villager. And fun fact, if you didn't know on Java Edition, if you hear a baby villager, on a chicken it stays so this middle zone is gonna be for that i'm gonna set it up to be like a toxic wasteland for our final villager but for now i need to take down this whole dirt road for like 400 blocks and then i need to build an entire farm to automate this to have any chance of even finding one
So hopefully with this setup we have here, I'm gonna AFK a few hours. If we're lucky enough, we'll get one of the villager, baby villagers riding a chicken. And hopefully, since they fall way slower, this water stream will catch them, push them into this bubble column, which will push them all the way up here with me. And then I'll be able to see them and hopefully name tag them, which I should have two name tags in here. Got some weakness potions, that way I can cure them. Obviously golden apples, and... Last but not least, name tags. So now I guess we're gonna AFK for a few hours and see what we get. So time to flick it on and hope for the best. And if this doesn't work after a couple of tries, then I'm gonna build, that is a lot of mobs. I'm gonna build the rest of the cylinders because this is one out of five that I can build. Anyways, I'm gonna head up here in AFK and let the farm do its work. And hopefully we'll come back to some baby zombies riding chickens. And after like four or five, oh my God. No, leave me alone. <laughs> you are so annoying. All right, I'm just gonna wait here till day, but we've only got two baby drowned, which uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty disappointed. I don't know if like the chickens just aren't going up through the tube down there and they're despawning or what's going on, but I'm gonna have to figure out something else here. Burn them, son. I hear them all swooping down. Yes, burn! Burn! I've been waiting here quite some more time, a couple of hours, and suffice to say, I have now got it working. Only issue now is, is getting the rarity I need, which I might have gotten before with all my AFK, but now I'll never know because I just now made my system where it works. So no telling how many I've probably missed out on. But I'm gonna leave my PC run a few more hours, and we'll see. There's like a center fold of like four of them in one spot, but I'm not seeing that big nose sticking out from any of them. So I think we've, we've been bamboozled. Yeah, none of these guys. I guess this little guy might be more rare than we thought. But see, my local difficulties increased up here. That's why I have that tabbed on. So I don't want to sleep, because sleeping resets your local difficulty. And my, with my local difficulty higher, we get more chance for that. Like, see, like a spider jockey and... It doesn't have to be in, like, a biome that villagers can spawn in, does it? I wouldn't think so. I finally have what I need, but <laughs> he's not on a dang chicken, so... This, this is just... This is just really fun. I don't think his chicken despawned, because every other chicken's here. Unless for some reason his chicken did magically just despawn out of all of them, but sadly he's gonna have to go. And I guess we AFK some more. I don't know what else to do. I have I have genocided so many chickens and baby zombies. So we actually finally got one. I've gotten quite a few villagers before, but none that have been like actually the chicken. So I think we need to name tag the chicken and the baby villager. All right, now that I have them both name tagged, I don't want him to be an ocean villager, just because then he'll be a normal plains villager, but he looks like he's already gonna be a plains villager looking by his outfit, so. If we cure him, he should stay stuck riding the the chicken. I'm like 99% sure, so now we just gotta wait here like five minutes. My local difficulty has skyrocketed also. I've been AFK for, I don't know, almost 100 Minecraft days. And just like that, now we have a mutant villager. He's a little villager riding on a chicken. That is ridiculously cool and rare. So now I guess maybe we're gonna try to bring him back with us. I got my render distance turned way down too. Also, I have AFK'd so much. I mean, look at this. And this is also a lot of mobs and they're loud, but every chest on here is full. Not that I need any of it, but you might as well. My local difficulty is insane though. I'm starting to get more than a few full armored mobs. I've even seen one that had a diamond leggings on. I think I'm finally gonna touch a bed. I'm not even gonna sleep, but I'm just gonna touch the bed. Just to make sure that the phantoms don't get me. But now I think I need to put this guy in a boat. Oh, this is a big drop for a boat. All right, we're just gonna make our way back now. And for their enclosure, I'm gonna try to make it some desolate wasteland. The first thing we should work on is our little toxic waste pit. So in order to make it have that little glow to it, we're gonna fill the bottom with some sea lanterns. Then we're gonna cover them up with black carpet. And then we're gonna take some dyed glass. 
And we're gonna layer it with green at the bottom for the darker color. And then we're gonna put a layer of lime on top of it. And what that should do is hopefully give it a deep color and then the lime will look more like a really radioactive body of water, hopefully. And this is near where the villager's gonna be growing his crops too. Then we're just gonna take some black concrete and we're gonna place concrete all the way around and that'll give it an even deeper look. See, kind of like that. It looks kind of dark and murky and mysterious. And see, at nighttime, now it'll glow and it'll just it'll look really cool, like a little radioactive body of water. And we're gonna come over here and I'm kind of hoping we can make like a little tree thing. And these are kind of the roots. And my whole point is to kind of make it look like a tree that's been hit by a blast. So I actually kind of think that looks pretty good. And then just so that way nothing can happen to our chicken, we're going to come up here and we're going to hide a little light source. And that should light up all this just to make sure no mobs spawn up here and then mess our chicken up. Well, that's kind of a goofy looking tree, but hey, at least it's there. I think that about does it for this little area. Now I think we should get a water jug, a water bucket, and place like two of them here, like one here and cover it up and then we'll place another one here. And plop the water in there. I don't really want to build any walls or anything else because I want to be able to see the chicken all the time, but I think something like this looks good. I think buttons are just kind of good. They add texture. Yeah, see, it just kind of looks like little stones. It has more texture. Oh, that comes along pretty nice. We're going to put one layer of glass around this just so that way the chicken can't get out and no other mobs can get in. And just like that. And that doesn't really affect us either. We can still see him pretty easily. I think we'll just nestle that. Ooh, he can get out there, actually. We'll just do that. There we go. <laughs> put a glass block on it. This poor guy. I think it's time to go get him now. What's that noise? Rip squid. There we go. He's fluttering his little wings. Come on. There we go. And now they'll be here forever. And with our final villager captured, our little radioactive villager, a mutant villager, if you will, next to his little pool of green goo in his wasteland, we need to go around and connect these to there. I think I'm just going to use a mixture of wood planks. I don't know. I'll have to see what looks best. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this video. We made a nice little wood outline here, etched it with stone bricks, and then just kind of terraformed the ground to match up. I would say my two favorites are definitely the desert, just because the little temple he has over there. Ah, yeah, we gotta go with three favorites. That's my third favorite. This is definitely my second, the peaceful pillager. I just find that hilarious. Hmm, <laughs> right back at you. And then my first favorite, of course, has to be the snowy biome. And then, of course, this ultra rare guy, uh, Falls pretty high up on the list, but not high enough to make my favorite. His enclosure is just kind of hard to do with a wasteland enclosure, but we put some slabs here so we can collect potatoes now. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.